coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're storyboarding with comics. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today we're talking about storyboarding and using comics, uh, especially on the creation side, to storyboard stories. And, and just a little bit about why you would want to do that. Um, there are a few reasons to do that. One is students can show comprehension, they can recreate scenes. So it's working on the idea of close reading for the common core and of course for any comprehension instruction. And at the same time, you can use it to jumpstart writing if you want them to write a narrative text or just as another form of writing, so using a different medium to show what kids can do and create. So let's get to the apps. The first app I want to talk about is called Comics Head. And in Comics Head, you've got lots of options. It's really a delightful way to look at comics. And what you do first is you choose a template and you can see that there's a selection of different templates that are available and you can scroll through them and find out which ones are relevant to what you're trying to do and then when you find something you can choose that. Now this one is one that is done so you can see what it looks like but if you want to start a new one what you do is you start a new one you just say add and then it asks you if you want to save and I don't want to save um, so no and then you choose the panels that you'd like to have. Um, I'm right now going to choose something fairly simple. This is a four picture panel. And now you can start adding your assets. And so you're choosing a background, let's say the external side of the house, set this as a background, yes. And then you can add different things. So you can see uh, characters, props, themes. So let's take a character. Uh, I think this is my favorite character right now. And you can see that immediately what shows up is uh, multiple versions of that character. So there's emotion behind it. It's a great way to talk about emotions and to force kids to choose what emotion is going on. So let's take this. And of course, this is a little too big because we all know that these uh, triangles are considerably smaller than houses. And then you can add text. And one of the things that I love about adding text is you can add a thought bubble, you can add a regular text, but you can also add audio. And I love that feature because that allows young kids or that allows kids that don't necessarily want to contribute uh, in text or don't feel as confident to do it in another way. Another way to think about it is for kids acting out the comics and then different uh, participants, different group members, can be the different voices of the characters. So we can add this here and then a double tap to, to type and I'll say I'm writing just a little bit of text and then I can move that text around and you can see that you can fairly easily uh, do create one, pan uh, one part of that uh, panel and then go to the next panel and again I can go to my assets, bring my character, right? And this would be just character without a background so you can do that. You can paint yourself so you can draw, you can use the tools to add to that panel so you don't have to take things that were pre-made. They can actually create on their own so I can take a crayon choose a color, and choose that color, and then draw there. And so lots of options, lots of ways to kids, for kids to interact. And I would say that if you're starting out and this is the first time students are using it, I would use just one, one page and over time they can take bigger and bigger challenges. That of course has to do with how complex you want their stories to be and how much do you want them to spend on it. This is a great way also to do homeschool connection where they do some of the work at school and then take it home and complete the work. And then when you're done, you can save and share and you can see that there are multiple options to share this. So you can save it as an image, you can share it with Facebook, with Twitter, 
and with an email and you can also connect it to the other services like YouTube and Instagram, uh, Google Drive and all of that. So lots and lots of options. Let's, for example, look at Google Drive and what you can see is it's a great option, but that's an option you actually have to pay for. So for the free version, the easiest way would be to save it as an image and then take that photo out of your, uh, out of your photos and share it to Google Drive that way. So you're not really bounded by it. It's just one more step that you have to take to share uh, that. And you can see that in preview, preview will allow you to flip through the pages that you already have. So let's look at something that was already created. Um, do I want to save? Absolutely, it's a masterpiece. Um, we can look at a comics that was already created. And this came with this, and we can preview it and then uh, go through and see that there's only one page here. So again, you can do more work. Now this can get very, very sophisticated. You can sort through the pages, you can uh, preview it, and you can add layers. So this can get really sophisticated. What I love about it is because they provide backgrounds and they provide characters, this could also be very simple. So you don't have to start with pure student creation where they're creating everything from scratch. You can actually take it one step at a time. So this is called Comics Head, and I, this is new to me, and I, I love this app. The second one is one that has been with us, and I've actually talked about it in the past, and this one is called Comic Life. And in Comic Life, you create something very similar, and that is you can create a comic or you can take something that you've saved and you can see that there are different templates that you can use depending on the style you want. And again, what I love about this is you can create just one page or a multi-page comic strip. And so if you're using one page with multiple uh, panels, that can be enough to highlight a scene out of the book or uh, the main storyline of the story they want to write or anything like that. So this is a travel story. And what I like about this is that these themes really guide kids towards certain aspects of what they're doing. So this is very obviously either travel or a story of espionage, espionage or something like that. And you can see that you can add pictures. And in this case, I'll go to my photo library and add pictures that I have. Um, so this is a great way to incorporate actually pictures you've taken in a classroom or if you've gone on a field trip or something like that, you can take those as well. Or art kids have created on paper uh, after they read. So lots of ways to bring that in. Let me take a few more just so you see what the final product can look like. Uh, I'll take another one. These are students we visited in China and uh, they were working on iPads. And um, here's another one. This is a teacher. So now you can see that this is the trip to, and I can say, this is our trip to China. And you can again add a and then you can add text and all of that. So you can build a storyboard fairly quickly, fairly easily, lots of ability to integrate different media into this, which is uh, just fantastic. So this would be, and now we've got a page. I would add a little bit of text and it's ready. So you can see that in about two, three minutes, I can create something if I have the pictures or if I'm taking pictures as I'm going along. You can think about that even for a science project or something like that. You take, you have the iPad, you take a few pictures, then you bring them into Comic Life, you edit it, you add some text next to it to explain what happened. It's another way to use that idea of comics. And then once you're done, it gets saved in your comics and you can see that you can save multiple versions and multiple a comic strips in this. The last one I want to talk about is called Bitstrips. And Bitstrips is a lovely little program that allows you to create a character for yourself. And it is, a, again, a free app, although you can pay for extra features just like the other ones. And what you do 
is you actually create a character. This is my character uh, that I created for myself. And so here I can create a comic. After I've created my icon, I can create a comic. And uh, there are lots of settings and setups that you can use. And this can be as simple as a one panel picture to talk about how you're feeling right now or something that you want to share that is considerably more uh, sophisticated. And uh, right now, uh, let's do a stressed one. And you can see that there are lots of features depending on what's stressing you right now. Um, some of them are scary. You can see that one. Guy's brain is exploding. This is my favorite, per my personally favorite one right now. So you can select that one and then share it. Uh, this is built originally with sharing on Facebook and social media. You don't have to use it that way. I actually, my favorite thing is to save these as pictures in my picture roll and then choosing how I send it to other people on how I use it. And if you think about it, you can create these uh, comic strips here and then import them even into Comics Head or Comics Life and uh, really enhance those comics with a permanent character that you've created here that's not necessarily one of the fixed ones that you have out of a limited choice in the other apps. So this one is called Bitstrips and it's uh, great fun and I've seen a lot of adults play with it but definitely kids could uh, play with it and enjoy it. So today we talked about three different apps that allow us to do some storyboarding and using the idea of comics to tell a story whether it's a retelling of a story and the main points in a story you read as part of comprehension and close reading or whether it is really focusing on the writing process or the composing process whether the final product is in comics which is fantastic or eventually gets transferred to a just regular writing which would be a pre-writing activity both are fine and I'll see you next time on iPads in the classroom